Go. Hey guys, welcome to Go Knuckle Talk with Flo. I'm Flo, and let me introduce you to my lovely, uh, if I was going to say sister, my co-host, Lisa <laughs> Nolan Hafner. Hey, Lisa. Hi, Michael. Here we are again. Doing it again. Well, hey, we have, who do we have tonight? We have some really special guests with us tonight. And ladies, I'm going to introduce you by your maiden name. That way people remember who you are. So we have Sharon Dallas, Hunt Now, and Carol Martin, and Jerry Killian. Carol Horn. Carol Horn, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I, I thought I was it's okay. <laughs> well, let's bring in our surprise guest. Okay, here we go. So, welcome. Oh, she logged out. Oh, no. oh she did. She well, can okay. you can you text her? Yeah. Okay. Uh. She, she was in the waiting room. While Michael is doing that, so where does everyone live? Um, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, and Jerry, where are you at? I'm in Lubbock. Lubbock. So, mm -hmm. You didn't wander far, did you? Well, I stayed close to Sharon, so. Yeah, I'm in Lubbock <laughs> as well. You're in Lubbock as well, okay. Yep. Okay, she is responding. Hey, well, I'm she's responding. So did you don't notice my shirt, Lisa? Oh, I love it. I didn't realize they had that logo. So are y'all familiar with Flatland Collective? For, to those of you out there, it was on our show tonight. It's a great little boutique in Plainview. And they have lots of stuff, and especially for Mother's Day. And if you mention Flow 20, they will give you a 20% discount. So we really want to promote our hometown businesses and you know help the Plainview economy uh when we can so a shout out to flatland collective and cool shirt michael yeah. yep flatlandcollective.com and promo code flow 20 flot -T -T yeah, So to clarify is that a promo only for online orders that is correct online orders only okay okay just wanted to clarify. and it's a, it's a one time per email so if you got multiple okay. emails Hey, 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 you can get a lot, you can get a lot, uh, multiple discounts. Yeah, so let's welcome our surprise special guest. Should I say her name or just bring her on? Just pop her up, just bring her on. Dr. Vera. Oh, Dr. Vera. Yay. <laughs> there Hi. she is. Hi, how are you? Good. We built yeah. up the suspense about the surprise guest. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a disappointment. I'm not all that glamorous. No. no. <laughs> the best surprise ever. <laughs> How are you, Sharon? Good. <laughs> Good. You look great. So, so Cheryl, where are you? Uh, what do you? Where are you living now? Dallas. Dallas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dallas. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fortunately, there's our big cities have a lot of traffic accidents so i just uh, got here literally yeah and my husband had the thing set up for me so he ca caught an earlier flight so anyway oh um, nice he was helpful well let's begin hey before we get to the questions i'm gonna ask a question that wasn't on our question list coach i'm gonna try to guess who gave you that nickname uh if you if you remember or not uh, i'm gonna remember. guess I, I was definitely. it john was it John Wright? No, no. Oh, actually, actually, I go to church with him now. He lives in Lubbock. Oh wow! Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you still going to guess? You want me to tell you? <laughs> yes. No, I'm done. It, it's Keith Bell. Oh wow! Really? Wow! Yes. Really? wow. I would have okay. never thought that. No. Wow. No. Yeah, he thought I, I looked like a coach. And I said, well, I guess it could be a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> I could look like a band director. How's that? <laughs> well, well, then, then the, the sec. The... Did you mind being called coach? I mean, that's how I was no, going to ask him that. It didn't bother me at all. It was, it was funny because all the years in Plainview, I, on the softball and everything, I played with all the coaches. And I had more. I had more, actually more baseball experience than they did because I played through high school at Monterey, and they were all mostly football players. So mm -hmm. I, I was the littlest guy on the team. I batted cleanup. 
Go start playing on that. Oh, no. You, we had, we had a good goal? time. Yeah, in softball. Huh? Yeah, it was funny. He had Buck Buchanan, who was huge, but uh, he couldn't hit a ball very far because he, he was so big. But, uh, <laughs> but they were they were great guys. We had a lot of fun. Where did y'all play? There in Plainview? Yeah, yeah, in the, in the city city softball. Okay. League. We had a team. That, okay. In fact, uh, my, the last year I was there, um, B. Terrell played with us, and so did Mo Evans. Came oh and Lord! <laughs> what was the name? Of, what was the name of the team? I couldn't even tell you. It's been so long. In fact, <laughs> ironically, Mo Evans used to live Caddy Corner across the street from me. Before we moved to this house, he was literally three street, three houses down from me. Oh wow, cool! I still see Mo all the time too. Yeah. Well, good. He hasn't changed a bit. He looks no, no. <laughs> Neither does B. <laughs> well, guys, him. go ahead, Lisa. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I don't know that Mo has changed very much. <laughs> no, he hasn't. He really hasn't. Well, guys, um, let's start. Let's see. Uh, Carol, you played a clarinet. Uh, Sharon, mm -hmm. you played a trumpet. Cheryl. What did you play? I forgot. Trumpet. Sorry. Like trumpet, trumpet, trumpet as well. And yeah. actually, Carol, you and I were next to each other in marching band, if I recall. Were we? I was I was I knew I was next to Aldrea Henderson one year. And I was trying yeah. to think through that. I really couldn't remember. We probably were. Was it our sophomore year? Or my sophomore year? Uh probably my our junior or definitely our senior year. Yeah. I know that was I think it was a fight song. You you and I added a little something at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did. We used to do that at the basketball games, remember? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So uh but anyway, why did okay, and then your sister uh Sharon uh, Michelle played saxophone. Did was Dina in in band as well? Dean was too and she played trumpet. Yeah. Okay, so I was gonna say, why did you guys play the same instrument but i guess michelle yeah, wanted to be guess, no different huh well michelle started it and she played sax and then i really wanted to play trombone because my dad played trombone but oh. um was it mr giddens in the sixth grade that i don't know i remember in he eighth grade. Had to try out different instruments he felt like i would do better with trumpet than trombone so yeah yeah will was, he would he would divide up test everybody yeah. and think which looked more appropriate for you yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, they was eighth grade, wasn't it? Yeah, he was eighth grade director, but as far as the six six grades where everybody started, and he would at the end of fifth grade when everybody was signing up, he would meet with everybody and try to get them placed to what instrument he thought was appropriate. And so yeah, Willis died about two years oh, cool. ago. He lived lived about three blocks away from me. He also went to church with me. You know. wow. He was he was what a nice guy. What a good guy. Hey, yeah, he was. He used to say he like that, that he, <laughs> yeah, that, and he would say he could outplay you with one long tie behind his back. Yes. I remember he would say that a lot, yeah, a lot. <laughs> so, so it's uh, but anyway, so, um, Lisa, you you go ahead. Well, I want to jump into um, Coach Killian and talk about your dad. Okay. So he was the band, was he the band director at Tech? Yes, yes, for about 30 years. And so that's that's why we he was at Fresno State and then took the Tech job in 1959. So we moved there when I was one. And so needless to say, it was a major influence on, on everything we did. And so. Yeah. Well, that was going to be my question on me. But did his uh, career influence your decision to do the same thing? Oh, absolutely. Because I just grew up with it, you know, nonstop. And that's what I wanted to start out doing. And so that's what awesome. we did. So you couldn't imagine doing something else. I mean, like you you knew at a young age that that's the direction you were going to go. Yeah, I, I thought it would have lasted longer, but it didn't. But it was, you know, five years. And then, but then it was, it was good. And, and my year, four years in Plainview were just really fun. OT was wonderful to work with. He was, what a great great man great guy everything about him was he was one yeah but you you got to have a few stories you can tell us that you know was behind closed doors there coach yeah, yeah we had um oh, okay yeah. it's funny the, the first time i ever had to give licks was to two ninth grade cheerleaders who are drummers 
Tiffany Schwamm and Christy Watson, they missed something. And that wasn't my section. And so OT comes in and says, well, you're going to have to give them two licks each. And I'm like, I've never done that ever. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I gave them some sort of love taps. And afterwards, we got into the closed door and he goes, that was not a SWAT. <laughs> <laughs> they were in their cheerleading uniforms of all things. Oh, ouch. So I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing uh, you learned how to give swats by the time you gave me one. I'll tell I you said that. I got better because my <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> because that was my fault. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That Sharon, what did, what, what did you do? What happened? What? Why did you get a leg? Well, <laughs> we decided, do you remember this, Carol and Sharon? We decided that we would go upstairs and hide in one of the practice rooms at yeah. the beginning of stage band. And so we went up there and I guess you weren't real pleased about it. So you weren't going to let us out of the room without giving us each a lit. Yeah. And so was, then I did volunteer to go first. And then I think I was the only one who got busted. And, and then you no, let him go. I gave no, both I of you. got him. I gave both of you. <laughs> oh, you did? Them. Okay. I didn't remember who else got them. I know yeah. Rodney didn't because he makes fun of me still about that. But. It was, it just was the my, it was my fault. It was my idea. And we hid up in those, remember how we had those cubbies upstairs where they yeah, slid yeah. the instruments in? Remember we were like hiding? You were probably there, Michael, okay. were you? Yeah, he was in. Band. No, and, uh, I was in band, band, but, but I wasn't, I was a good kid. Yeah. yeah. But it was stage band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so a was... Point for just sort of general principles. I didn't, I hated doing it, but, but I sort of. I felt it so too. bad. I felt bad because you gave us a chance. You were like, "Who whose idea was this or something? And I didn't fess up. And I still to this day carry guilt. Like, oh my gosh, they all got slots. But see, I, I I would ask, why? Why did you hide? Why was because it was purpose? fun. I think they were just, we're just being dumb. dumb. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were being silly. It just sort of caught me at the, at the wrong time. <laughs> what about you, Cheryl? Oh yeah, I, I, um, I think I got licks from OT Ryan, uh -oh. and that guy he was um, slim build, but he had some muscle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, but the worst licks I ever saw were J.W. King gave one to Wade Cox or a couple to Wade Cox, and another kid. Oh. And Wade was so tall that when J.W. the very first one he missed and he skipped the paddle all the way up his back. Ooh. And I was the witness to make sure that everything went right. You know, of course, Wade goes, Wah! and I'm standing there, like, oh my gosh, I'm the witness that this is supposed to go right. And so then he gave him a second one, and normal. And then the other kid who was getting them goes, I can't remember who that was. He goes, make sure you hit me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, uh, it's funny, JW afterwards said, You think he's going to tell his dad? I said, No, because his dad would give him. A lot worse than what he got there. If he knew he could, got did he lifted. not? Did, did he not lift his shirt to see if he had any? No, we, we tried to act like it didn't happen. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so, along the along the legs, Kelly, and I want to ask you this: so, when you had to do it, I mean, you you've already said you didn't enjoy doing it. I, I'm glad you didn't enjoy doing it. But did you ever have the thought, like, damn it, why did you put me in this position? No, it, that first of all, I think OT was just. Since it was those two little cheerleaders, I think he thought that was really funny. And so, <laughs> and I mean, I hardly, I tapped them. But when I got Carol and Sharon, I was, I was a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, I, I can say I never got licks from the co from the, any band director. All yeah. my licks came in seventh grade. I got five in seventh grade. Oh. And after that, I guess I was just good and never got caught. So, yeah. Cheryl, what did you do to get your licks from OT? <laughs> I have no idea. Honestly, I cannot uh, remember. I remember yeah. those like, no, seriously, I can't. I think it was like missing practice or like something like that. But that was the only time I got licks. Was Probably promoted. being late or something. I yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm always damn. late, even to this day. So can I ask a question? What does OT stand for? What is that Oscar an abbreviation? Truitt. What? Truitt, Ryan the third. Wow. Oscar Truitt? Oscar Truitt. Uh -huh. Okay. Oscar. No wonder he went by OT, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now he took he he took right right after Chief Chief Davidson. Was, yeah, he Chief Davidson was the first director, and then OT went there out of college as the assistant junior high 
And after about 15 years, then he took over at the high school when Chief retired. Did uh, OT ever mention any stories about Chief? Because, I mean, I no, know the name, I think, but I didn't. Not really. Uh, I don't think Chief was a very comical or I think he was strictly down to business on everything. So, well, Why was he called? I guess you I may not know. I, I don't but, know. I don't know why that was. Oh, well, let's go back to OT. I assume he interviewed you. Yes, he how did. did. How did how did that go? Well, I mean, yeah, it, I, well, I already knew OT for twenty years because of my dad. So oh, okay. it, it wasn't like I walked in there and didn't know him, but uh, and he knew me somewhat. I mean, it wasn't like I was up at Plainview all the time, but you know, our parents were really good friends, and so mm. it was it was great. It was it was sort of I think he wanted just because of who I was, he wanted me there, and so. It, it, it worked out great. It was, you know, walked in as the first assistant, which was, which is fun. And uh, so that was my duties. I had to, I had sixth grade beginner of one class. I go to the seventh grade and then the eighth grade. Then I had four period band as, as OT like to call them Jerry's kids. Cause it was the kids who weren't good enough to be in. <laughs> I thought, J I thought Mr. King had those. <laughs> no, he, he had the third band and then JW. Yeah, he had the ninth grade band or the third band, and and uh, and so I guess at that time JW was going down to the junior highs when I would come up, and then of course fifth period was jazz band, stage band, and then sixth period was coffee time. So it, it was fun. yeah, that, that was you, as the second in charge, you got the jazz band. So that's that's how I did it. Plus I played in them all the way through high school and college. And so it so was, you that, was, that was my fun class today by far. I mean. Because it was everybody, they were such great kids. That it was just, oh, it was wonderful. But there you go. I, I don't know if you recall, but uh, Andrew Dunlap and I used to play you and the choir director, forgot his name. We used to play uh, you guys in, in, in Rocket Ball. In racquetball. Yeah. I don't know yep. if you recall that. So I do remember that. And you I guys remember, had no I chance. She is. No, you didn't. <laughs> Ron, you know, Ron was a good athlete. He played fullback at UTEP. And oh, he, yeah. yeah. He was built like a truck, but he could really move pretty well. So, he was a big guy, though, wasn't he? Yeah, he was about 5'10, about 220 at that time. So, I haven't seen Ron in 30 years, probably. So, well, you go ahead. To Monterey High School. So, how was it going from our biggest rival to then uh, teaching? It, it wasn't it, it wasn't a real big deal because um, I've, been, I've been five, four years of college and one year of grad school. So, you just sort of it, it was it was funny that first year we we came down to play at Lowry Field and play just beat the crap out of Monterey and and a bunch of my old friends were there and they were like, "How are you allowing that?" I said, "We got a better team, yeah. <laughs> we got a better coach and a better team." <laughs> Did you go to school with Wes Tolly, Bethany? Tolley? Well, Wes was three years young. You know, his dad was a, was a tech trumpet teacher. Yeah, and so yeah. Wes was probably four to five years younger. But Wes's older sister, Tammy, was my age. So. Okay. Yeah, because I knew Joel Mallory, Ross Ward. I mean, I, I hung up with a lot of this, those guys in Lubbock. Yeah, they were all five years younger than me. So I, I knew Wes, but I didn't know the others. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. So, um, ladies, jazz band. You know, I'm going to be honest. When I joined it, because uh, Mr. Burks had it the year before, and they were playing some damn good music. A little hip, I'm not a little pop music, so I'm gonna join in my junior year, and then missed it. And then coach here changes it to jazz band. I was like, jazz band, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> so did you change it back to jazz band, or or, or did OT ask you to change it to jazz band? I just, I just, at that at that point in time, that's pretty much what everybody has called it in the so-called professional world. It just very very few stage bands just didn't really exist anymore by the time i was through college and everything it was just they were all jazz bands when i went got my master's degree at illinois i played in the top jazz band there and stuff. so that's cool i just i just knew i just didn't call it a stage band that was really a term from the 50s and so i was trying to think yeah. i was upgrading <laughs> <laughs> so what about you ladies you can tell us the stories back when we were together in jazz band besides hiding in the cubby holes. <laughs> I remember when we went to that 
contest, and I thought it was in Lubbock, but Michael, I think you said you thought it was in Austin. It was no, it somewhere. Was tech. Yeah, it was in the okay. tech. Yeah. Well, what I remember is it was news to me that day that we had to sight read, and I can sight read notes on a piano, but I don't really know how to sight read chords. <laughs> and so I'm looking at you from behind the piano, like I don't know what I'm doing. And there was like an Im like an improvised solo or something yeah. Yeah. that I was supposed to play, and all I had was the chord structure. <laughs> and I'm sure that we got a second because literally I had no clue, zero. Um, so that yeah, was that, terrible. It was it was actually pretty good. We did make it too, but when you think about it, we y'all didn't have any experience at all in true jazz band. Yeah. And those other schools have been doing that for years. So those kids had a lot of experience in it. I was that where – was that when Houston – because there was a Houston school mm -hmm. there, and they play yeah, like there yeah. were – Yeah, performing in visual arts came up with that. And, you know, I was like – I, I told another podcast, like, it, it seemed like it was the Marcellus brothers were playing. Yeah. I mean, those guys were just Yeah, they were the best kids from all over Houston. So it was – needless to say, they were like a professional group. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, what about what about you, Cheryl? Can you tell us any fun stories back in our jazz band days? Well, I just remember being amongst the most silly people in my life. I mean, we had a lot of fun. That was, there was um, a lot of cutting up and jokes, and I know why I got the licks because um, they were passing a joke from person to person. And I didn't want to be the person to not pass it on. I mean, even though it wasn't like something I would say, but I didn't want to like disrupt the chain. So I was passing it on and then um, we got in trouble and I got caught and I got, I got licks for that, but I didn't start it. And, um, you know, but those kids were, I mean, Mark Mathis, Brent, Sharon, all of us back there. I mean, we just had a great time. And um, I really, I just want to tell you coach, I really appreciate the music that you introduced us to. I mean, I probably had never heard any of that music and um, it just really um, gave me an appreciation for it. So thank you so yeah. much. Well, it makes me happy to hear that. <laughs> Y'all were wonderful. That was a great group of kids. I, I do remember that contest and Sharon was playing lead trumpet mm -hmm. and they gave the award for the best trumpet player out of our band to mark because his face turned so red and, and so <laughs> well, he was back. like he was like 610 yeah he's know? huge and so <laughs> they just assumed it was him and so i went back and afterwards and told the judges i said no i, I hate to say this but he gave it to the wrong one so they re redid it and gave it to sharon so wow. oh. didn't know that Thank did you. he did he know he got it or are you just yeah, they, they told... both ended up with it, oh. their names just went in the program stuff and so they both had their names in there as members of the outstanding members. Yeah. Well, why, I, I, why? I was going to say, I, I messed up too, Carol. Uh, okay. There was, there was a, there was a, again, I don't remember music. I forgot, uh, but there was a part when I wasn't supposed to play until the second round. But of course I'm playing along when I'm supposed to be not playing. And coach is like, Hey, I'm like, oh, my bad. <laughs> so, hey, I messed up too. So, anyway, what about you, Sharon? Yeah, and I remember there was a play, and I appreciate you too. I want to say that too because um, I don't think I realized. Well, I didn't realize just what great music we were playing, and and didn't appreciate it back then like I do now. But um, there was a place where I was supposed to improvise. And I remember you wrote it out for me. You wrote out my solo for me because I didn't know how to improvise. Like kind of like Carol, based on the chords or the key signature and everything. Um, I just wasn't dedicated enough to try to do that. And so you wrote it out for me. So, <laughs> And you know what was weird? We drove our own vehicles to Lubbock. Yeah. I remember that? I, I can't imagine in, in today's world doing and, that I mean, and i remember cool. i threw an apple or quinta threw an apple outside my car and it landed either or sharing in your car or michelle's car and it just splattered everywhere but again it's, you probably don't remember <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah it was yeah, odd that we took our own vehicles 
Do y'all remember they used to let us drive from Plainview High School over to that parking lot at yeah. Bulldog Stadium if it was muddy when we were marching? And yeah. I think about that now. And like, you know, I drove a pickup truck, so I would be like pulling out and people would just be throwing like um, tubas and bass drums in the back of my pickup and I would just keep going. I mean, I just can't believe now, you know, thinking back on that, that you guys let us do that. You know? They wouldn't let you do it now. I mean, yeah. and, it, and we had it just scared us to death because half the kids would, would say, don't drive past. Well, Lord, they are skipping off those bumps. On that <laughs> one big dip. Yeah. Oh. It's a yeah. wonder we didn't have more wrecks. So we had, what was yeah. it, Kylie? What's her name? Drove through the fence on one of those because she had the bump and lost control and broke through people's fence. They're like, oh, wow. Well, that's a great deal. Isn't it? I think <laughs> I think you had already graduated, Michael. Oh, yeah. I was like, okay. I don't remember that. That's funny. I have a question for the ladies. It's a two part question. One is, did you play band in college? And then, secondly, how did being in band and being part of that, uh, camaraderie and the influences of both OT and Coach Killian, like how did that impact you later in life? Because I, I'm, a, I'm a huge believer that music has a huge impact on us, whether we realize it or not. So did you play in college and how did being in the band influence you in different ways beyond high school and college? Sharon, let's start with you. Okay. So I did play in college and I was going to go to tech my freshman year and then Michelle decided to, you know, she, she got married and everything and we were going to room together. So then I decided I didn't want to go to Lubbock. So, um, I ended up going to Angelo state my first two years. And so I was in band there and it, it was just a great experience. They had a really good band. Um, uh, marching band was fun. Uh, it was an eye opener, um, for what they would let you do because there was, you know, young adult people in there. Uh, and then also in the concert band and we, we got to play for TME, T TMEA that year and record an album. And then I was also in jazz band. And so um, it, it was just great and, and very intimidating my freshman year because I went from being lead trumpet to, um, to being around some really, really good musicians and stuff. And so it, but it was fun. And uh, yeah, I loved the band. I met just so many of my friends there and then just learned um, kind of like teamwork and depending on each other. And we would goof off and joke around all the time. But when it came time for contest, we were serious. I mean, we we were proud of being in the, the Plainview band and we wanted to continue our string of first divisions. And so there was a lot of pride in that. And so when it came down to doing our work, we got busy and we did what needed to be done. And so um, it was just one of the best memories I have of high school is being in band. So, yeah. That's wonderful. What about you, Cheryl? Um, band was really, um, really shaped me, I think. Um, I met all of my good friends, um, Deanna, um, Sharon, Michelle. Um, can't, I mean, I can't name everyone. Joanne, um, she was one of the twirlers. Um, and we just we just learned how to cooperate and to be under pressure. You know, there is sometimes you were tired, right? You know, like I don't really want to go in the morning to practice or, you know, I'm tired. I don't I don't feel like practicing more or whatever. And it's just um, you just learn that you have to be dedicated and, and to pursue um, a goal and to um, to achieve that. And, you know, I, re I really appreciate that, you know, being able to be part of something that was successful, like, like the band, because they did have, um, you know, such a tradition. And it was just really, really nice. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, it, we had a lot of great times there. So, so. Like that, that commitment and tenacity and practice and all that, that, that influenced you later in your life, in your career or school and all that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, even just like, um, going through residency and medical school and, I mean, you kind of build those bonds with other people in your, in your medical school class and things, cause you're all in it together. You know, you're all suffering together <laughs> or, you know, working hard, but, 
you know, just having that model at a young age, I think that really, really helped me, you know, to just, uh, you know, be able to depend on people, have people depend on you and, and to pull your own weight kind of thing. Beautiful. Thank you. What about you, Carol? Both of them. I mean, I've thought about it a lot since high school. Like, I think you guys taught us everything we needed to know to be successful in life. You know, we had to be on time. We had to be responsible. We had to work as a team. Um, we expect, you guys expected excellence from us. You know, OT, I don't know how he did it. I think about this a lot as a parent. Like, we were kind of afraid of him, but at the same time, we knew he loved us, you know, and I just think he, he was such an incredible role model. Um, and it, it really was the best part of high school for me, for sure. Yeah. I think of OT, he, he, a uh, thing that really impressed me most about OT was his biggest concern was his, for the kids. That was, that was his most important thing to him. And, and, and what was it he'd always he always he, he he gave good lessons on when he talked to you about not being a knucklehead or not i can't remember what it was he could say all the time bush link bush he link, told us bush 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i remember that yeah no, but he, but yeah. i think he, he was you know expected performance and discipline and i think that carries off in your life you know mm -hmm. from then on because he he was a, a great man he was. Uh, he, he, I agree. He was definitely intimidating, uh, but he was fair at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, there was one time, I think I told him one of the other podcasts that I, I was playing football and uh, it was great. What's one thing about playing view? We had band in the morning, so I was able to do athletics in the afternoon, football, basketball and, and, and baseball. Well, I got hurt on a Saturday. And I told, I think I told you, coach, I said, hey, I'm going to be late Monday morning because I have to, you know, uh, ice my knee. Well, as I walked in, OT is is as angry at everyone for people coming in late. And of course, here's my ass coming in late. <laughs> and, I'm, and everyone laughs. I'm like, what? And he, he goes, he has an excuse. Yeah, I was limping, limping. So uh, that's one of my stories about OT. I think you limped even more after <laughs> Yeah, I did. <laughs> but never got licks from you guys. Yeah, never did. <laughs> so, hey, let me, uh, Carol, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Uh, Shadowhawk, Shadowhawk Country Club is a very prestigious uh, country club in Sugarland or near Sugarland. And uh, I was caddying for a tournament there. And uh, uh, it was the Three Amigos, which is uh, Jim Lance, uh, Freddie Couples, and Blaine yeah. McAllister. Yeah. And you know where I'm going with this. So yeah. <laughs> we got to meet him at, at the uh, one of the part threes, shook hands. And all of a sudden, this guy and this lady walks up and Jim Lance Nance. And this is a guy from NBC. Yeah. And here comes John Horn from Plainview, Texas. I'm like, what? <laughs> Plainview, Texas? <laughs> really? So he went to school <laughs> with those guys. And yeah, as soon as they teed off, I went, I drove to John. I said, hey, I'm from Plainview, too. No, you're not. Yeah, I know Carol and Joe. Oh, hey, honey, he knows her sister. My sister's brother, but anyway, it's a small world. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, I went to that tournament once. Yeah, I don't know if it was the same year, but. It was, uh, yeah, it was in Sh uh, Shadowhawk weather by, again, Sugarland. So, yeah, uh, I mean, Roger Clemens was a member there, uh, George H. Bush. So it was a lot, it was a lot of money to join. I called whenever they were first building it to see what the uh, initiation fee was. And they said about 150000 I'm like, okay. <laughs> Okay, no, I'll, uh, I'll stick to my public courses. So <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Lisa. Well, I want to know um, about some of the band trips. I know all sorts of shenanigans occurred on the bus. I wasn't in band, obviously, but I had lots of band friends and I heard all sorts of stories. Who wants to share a funny story? For first of all, what bus did you Ride. I know everybody like had their designated buses, but I somebody bus two. All of us were bus two, weren't we? No, all on bus two. Is that the Bluebird? Mm -hmm. No, no, we did we did Greyhounds, and so they were yeah. We had six Didn't buses. OT always had me ride bus four just in case the back half got separated. That way, <laughs> I don't know what I was going to do. <laughs> I think we, we were usually. I don't remember what bus I rode. 
I think we were usually two because OT usually put the list up at the end of stage band. So we got to like kind of group together. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that was one advantage being in the jazz band. You got to sign up early on the bus list. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That was a big deal. Yeah. Getting yeah. On the bus it list. was a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> you had to be on the right bus, but no no stories. I, I had one That's with, I had, I had a student named Michael that I'd always sort of wrestle with. And we were about to go to Hereford and I was going to pick him up. And I bent over, is Michael, Michael Flores, by the way. And uh, <laughs> as I was picking really? him up, my pants Rip the back total <laughs> all the way to my crotch. For literally five minutes to about to leave, and I go, OT, I'll be back in a few minutes. My house, I was out there in Westgate, so I drove like a bat out of you know what over there and changed the hurry. And I came wheeling in and jumped on the bus. And we left. So I was winning, <laughs> huh? Perfect. Do what? Was I winning? No, no, of course not. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh huh. Uh -huh. Picking up, I was muscling you around, and I mean, that pant just went rip. I thought, oh my gosh. Hey, um, I don't know, Coach, if you remember, there was a student uh, teacher there, a blonde headed guy, curly yeah. hair. That yes. guy looked exactly like that actor from All American Hero. Greatest American Hero. A greatest American Hero. Yeah. yeah I he mean, was, he. He was a strange guy. He was. He, he would not show up very often. He'd come into OT and say, well, I'd like to direct the band today. And OT's like, yeah, I, I bet you would, but you're not going to. <laughs> you're going up. But, uh, yeah, he he was, a it was a, a, a graduate. Yeah, oh, student teacher from, uh, from Whalen. From Whalen, yeah. And I yeah. told him that what he looked like. He got mad at me. I'm like, okay, yeah. dude, all right, cool. Well, everybody brother. did. So, <laughs> you, you guys don't remember him? I did. He, really? he, he wasn't very involved, and so okay. most student teachers are more much more involved than what he was. But, uh, but uh, I just remember uh, JW okay. JW King, who was another just wonderful guy. But he was in later years when he was there, and he didn't have great control of that third man. And mm -hmm. I'd hear in the hallway, <laughs> we'd be putting up our chairs. His band would be putting up theirs, and I'd hear somebody say. Hey, Mr. King, do, 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 do. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> he couldn't hear it. <laughs> I sort of act like I didn't hear it because I didn't want him to take whoever it was because I wasn't really sure who it was because the whole crowd yelling not nice things at all. But but he was he was wonderful. They they called him behind his back Fred Flintstone and he sort of looked like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he was back in his day, he was a phenomenal director and great musician all his kids were great musicians too one of his son who's my age is, was a professional trumpet player in vegas for years oh nice yeah, yeah he was really good wow that's a Coach, didn't your dad um prep us for concert one year yes it was really dr gardner but didn't your dad do it once he did one time. Um, he, he did the marching band a couple times just on some things. But uh, my dad's health had gotten so, you know, he had a brain tumor when he was 52. Oh. And then, so he retired when he was 54 because it really, and so I was I was a sophomore at Tech when he had that brain tumor. So it, that sort of changed things for him a lot. And so he lost hearing in one ear, and that's hard to, yeah. hard to be a band director when you don't hear out of one side, and, you know. Mm. But anyway. Wow. Lisa? The ladies, what other teachers? Um, first of all, how did o OT and um, and Coach Kelly influence you? But are there any other teachers who had an impact on you in high school? Cheryl, let's go with you. Start with you. Hmm. I'm trying to think of um, the English teacher I really liked, or Miss, is it McCullough? Yeah, Miss McCullough. She was kind of ditzy, but um, I really liked the way she would interpret like literature and kind of give us like themes and things like that. So I I really learned to appreciate a, literature from her a lot more. Um, but she was kind of ditzy. But and when she got past that, it was okay. Um, I like Coach Hill. I had him for math. He was hilarious. He was just fun. Um, I mean, all our teachers, I mean, 
that's the one thing about the band directors that I must say they were like I think um a level above most teachers just because I felt like it wasn't just a job for them like it was a vocation like a love for what they did and being on the receiving end of that you could really tell because they put in so much time and so much energy into our experiences I mean there's no way they were getting paid enough to do that but you could tell and you know I mean, I have to say that that band is the one thing that I remember the most about high school and and all the trips you you mentioned the trips, the trips were crazy. You just got to see the wild side of people. I was not wild at all. Um, and but I could observe a lot. And some of the stuff they did was hilarious. And but I will never tell on people. So that's why I'm not what, saying anything. what I could say on <laughs> this real quick. <laughs> What, what I can say on a out-of-town game on Friday, on Monday, several people wore, wore, uh, wore turtlenecks. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of romance on the buses. There yes. was. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Sharon, what about you? What about you, Sharon? Yeah, so kind of like Cheryl, I think the ones that made the most impact on me were probably OT and Coach, just because... I think we spent more time with them and they took time to, to talk to us and, and, you know, care about our future and give us advice and stuff like that. And so probably the most in, impactful people. Um, so coach, even though you probably thought we were all a bunch of knuckleheads, we were really listening to you and, and you made an impact. And then I think my senior year, my English teacher, I think it was Mrs. Hoffman was her name. And she was so, Huh. But I really learned to write. Like I thought I knew how to write and I was pretty decent, but I remember I really learned how to write. She really taught me a lot and it really helped me in college. And um, oh, Miss Barry. I remember having Miss Barry for computer science because when mm -hmm. we were in school, I mean, computers were just a new thing, right? <laughs> we mm -hmm. didn't have PCs. And so, um, I don't know. That's just what I remember. Yeah, we were learning DOS, Lotus mm -hmm. 1, 2, 3. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, what about you, Miss Carol? Um, I didn't answer that question a while ago. I did not play uh, clarinet in college because I went to Texas A&M and, you know, it was an all-boys marching core band, which I didn't have any desire to be a part of. So, um, But I missed it. You know, I missed what we had in, in high school. And as far as teachers, like, I also think in general, the teachers there were phenomenal. I mean, I was fully prepared for college and it was incredible, but specifically Mrs. Bauckham and Mrs. Barry, mm -hmm. the math teachers, I, I think it was like, we didn't have calculus in Plainview, but I got all the way through my first semester of calculus at A&M knowing everything. So they like overtaught us essentially. And then that computer class, Sharon, as I remember, we had to take it in the morning, like almost like driver's ed, didn't we, or something? It was really early in the morning, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, but I could be remembering wrong, but that was incredible. I remember still like, what is a mouse? You know, like we mm -hmm. didn't know anything, you know? And then by the end, Mrs. Berry taught us to code in basic, you know? at the time but yeah the math program i think was was really good and i loved band obviously hey uh, what about you coach besides ot uh did you hang out with any other teachers there i mean plainview is a small town well uh, yeah i was you know of course with ron lang the choir director we were about two years apart in age and and then the coaches that uh but we were sort of off over there on our own corner and and so we weren't really part of the school like you would be in the, you know, in regular English or math over that part. But um, yeah, of course, Larry B was a good friend of mine. He, we, we played, he just lived around the corner from us. So he and I played a lot of golf with Leon Kendall. Okay. And, um, they were, they were, they were good friends. And so, and then the coaches, like I said, we had, I spent a lot of time with them. I'm pretty sure you guys ragged on some of some of the students in the, you know, playing golf and 
a, a little something. bit. Um, it was more <laughs> the athletes on um, some of the athletes who thought they were really something. You know, they were like, yeah, he thinks he's something, but he, he not. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the really good ones, I mean, they were all, they were good. <laughs> yeah. You know, we had some really good ones there, especially in football. Goodness. Yes, yeah. we did. Yeah, we had we had uh, good athletes out of football. Um, yeah. Ladies, can you remember any, or even you, coach, any game uh, away game where the fans were disrespectful? <laughs> yeah, Herbert, <laughs> the one that he <laughs> say anything, throw anything, or. All right, what about you, Coach? What uh, what do you remember about Hartford? Well, I remember when we were driving in the buses, there was a on the one of the side of the overpasses they had made a big sign that said F U C K Plainview. And I'm thinking, Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> obviously they they must not like us much over here. <laughs> wow. I remember somebody mooning us when we were leaving Hereford. And and didn't they slash the tires on the bus? Um, dreaming that maybe they slash somebody's car tires. I don't, I, I, I don't remember the bus was having that. I remember okay. maybe it was some cars that got their tires. Maybe slashed. it was that. Yeah, they, that was a rough group over there. Goodness, that was that was, yeah, that was sort of shocking to see. Yeah, that. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's in big letters. I assume it oh, was it's big. I don't remember that. Wow, okay. All right, what about you, Carol? You remember? Any? Um, I remember Monterey always being kind of nasty, but I don't like remember specifically what. I mean, Jeannie's story was it that Monterey where somebody threw stuff on her uh, tomatoes? Yeah. Mm. Um, but I just remember OT would not let us. That was not acceptable to say anything back, or you know. I remember one time we were doing that Monterey who who you know that chant and I mean he shut that down fast like he was not going to let us sink to their level you know Cheryl I don't remember anything specifically that happened to me but um definitely you could tell when the town that you were visiting did not like you um, I do remember p playing at um, Odessa. Do y'all remember that? I don't know if it was like regionals or or something like that. And it was just like, I felt like we were just being watched, you know, because they were so, it seemed like they were so big. And we mm. were like, you know, we're, I think we got beat the, by them too, because they oh, were yeah. just so good. Yeah. They were well, just so. San Angelo, we played San Angelo in the playoffs, and we had a really good team, and we lost to them. And it was all the way down there. We drove all the way back. Maybe afterwards. that was it. Yeah. And, the, and it was a big stadium, big crowd, and it was. It was really different. You could tell that yeah. you know, which is just out of a different league, I guess. So that, was, but you could always tell Hartford was always terrible. Yeah, and Lubbock, I don't remember. Amarillo, I don't remember, but. Her old schools weren't any good in football, so it was never much of a game there. Yeah, yeah. Someone threw a hot. I think uh, again, I'm trying to remember, but it was a high, Emerald High, maybe. But the someone from the stands threw a hot dog and hit me on my shoulder. <laughs> oh, yes. And of course, I'm I'm like I saw the guy. I'm running up there trying to climb the damn thing and cussing at him. And then, uh, but uh, other people grabbed me and say, "No, no, no." I said, "I don't give a shit." <laughs> I'm an athlete. I can take them. <laughs> but, uh, Before you hurt your knee, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Possibly. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, uh, go ahead, Lisa. No, Sorry. I was just going to say something earlier when y'all were talking about your teachers and the influence that Coach and OT had on you. You know, because we've interviewed, the you know, the twirlers and other band members and, and, uh, and, and through all the classmates. One underlying theme for everyone that I keep hearing is um, how invested the teachers and band directors were in the students. And Cheryl, you alluded to that. Um, and I think that's a real common theme that with everybody that we've interviewed. And it just, it just makes me so proud. I mean, how fortunate we all were to have the teachers that we had um, in high school. That really, like you said, nobody was, teachers don't get paid enough, even to this day. 
Um, but that they were really invested in us. And I think that lent itself to all the camaraderie and the cooperation and collaboration and, and the tightness of, of the small groups of friends, you know. You knew that somebody in that school had your back. And there, there's somebody that you could probably go to at any time, whether it was OT or, you know, another teacher. And I know for me, you know, you had this reverence and fear for your teachers, but also a trust and a knowing that you could go to them. And it's pretty cool to hear these stories come up again and again of how everybody was impacted by the faculty. So it's very cool. Thank you all for sharing that. You know, and also, at least we've always heard about how close Sherwood and, and OT were. were and close. Coach, you, you witnessed that. So you have any stories about the, those two gentlemen? I mean, no, they, they, they were very good friends, though. And, um, and then uh, OT would go over there quite a bit because Sherwood was had just at his only class was football at the end of the day, especially on game days, he would get so uptight. So after band rehearsal, OT would usually go over there about right before lunch, and then they would just spend about an hour together. And he would just try to talk to him about anything except for what the game's going on, just mm -hmm. trying to help him relax. Because I mean, he would—I mean, sure would. I mean, he was intense, and he would. But if OT didn't do that by game time, I mean, he was just a giant knot. And so I thought that was always a neat deal. They had a—they had a real good friendship, and. Uh, do you remember, Michael, that um, on the bus before State, uh, Coach Sherwood came on and gave us those angry red stickers the football players wore on their helmets? You know, if they did something really good, they got these stickers yeah. that they put on their helmets. And he came on to each band bus and he gave us one and we put them on our hats right in front. Oh, I don't and remember I that. That was so cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and really, like he took the time in every single band bus and gave really, us those. So we felt the, really, you know. Yeah. He was he was a smart guy and a good guy. And he would have, um, you know, pepper. the football team would come out to the final rehearsal before marching contest and do a pep rally for the band. And, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. That is not that is not the norm, I can tell you that. No, mm -hmm. that was that was cool. Yeah. Uh, pretty brilliant at inspiring and motivating people. Yes. Not, just not just the players. Mm -hmm. the community and other teachers I mean, he was just brilliant at that yes yeah even, I mean, the, uh, go ahead i was just gonna say the whole town you know i grew up watching football my brothers were football players my other brothers and sisters were in the band so we always went to the games but once he came everything just changed mm -hmm. it was just so Overnight, yeah, literally. Yeah, and, you know, all of us had the, you know, we go buy those little red stickers at England's Wholesale or whatever and put them on our cheeks, you know. I was our glasses. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were all just so into it, the whole town, and, and I just think that's so special, like, looking back on it, that we got to have that experience. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of the football players said the band was huge influence to uh, on game day i don't know if you guys watched the 78 team uh some of the guys from 78 uh the at the paso game where they're in the locker room and they hear the band chanting anger red enough said anger red, and they said these guys were about to tear up the locker room man it really got them pumped up so uh we were very big influence on their on their game day so cool so, anyway Lisa or me? Uh, Can I ask Coach a question? Yeah, sure. go ahead. I'm just curious because, like, I I think our sophomore year we had an incredible show, and a lot of it was the trumpet section, Sharon mm -hmm. and Cheryl. Like, mm -hmm. you guys were phenomenal that year. We had like five solos or something in that mm -hmm. uh, marching routine. Uh -huh. And I've always wondered, you know, I remember my mom saying something like. Uh, they voted last night and y'all aren't going to state, which I don't even think any of us knew that we even could go to, go to state. Like, I don't think anybody expected it. But I always wondered, like, behind the scenes, like, what actually happened? Why, why, yeah. we, didn't, why we didn't accept the invitation? Yeah. Well, our band that year was not big. And oh. we had been going down to Austin and all those schools and everybody would have huge 
bands and, and OT said, we're just going to have a hard time competing on that volume size. And so he, mm. said, he said, I don't want to go down there and come in 16th place, you know. Wow. So that really was the biggest reason. That was a tight show. It was a great show. Yeah, it was a fun show. We 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 had we had a lot of well, Joe played a solo and Sharon yeah. and and John played John. a solo. Yeah. And Cindy? Did Cindy play? Yeah, yeah. she did. Yes, Cindy yeah. did too. Yes. Yeah. Was that a smaller band because the freshmen weren't on on the marching band? Yeah, that year they weren't. So we moved them up after that, and that helped immensely on just getting more sound and more numbers and easier to to do a bigger show yeah it was my freshman year my freshman year our freshman year lisa that ot allowed all the freshmen to march and then our sophomore year they didn't allow the freshmen maybe a hand i don't Carol know maybe marks. you guys yeah, yeah. You guys, a few of y'all but not but it wasn't all the uh, freshmen but then back to our junior year y'all sophomore year they allowed freshmen and that's by the time I graduated, it was fresh was was also. I'm trying to think. I think Carol and Sharon and Cheryl, y'all were sophomores my first year there, I think. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we didn't that year the ninth grade was separate and and it was a weaker group and they really struggled. And and so that's the next year. Um well that ninth grade was a real strong group, and so we decided to bring them up and then just leave them up because it just made such a difference. Oh, so you weren't there when we went to state? No. The, yeah, was, okay. That was the year before? Yeah, Larry's last year, I think. How old were you when you started? 23. Wow. wow. <laughs> I remember <laughs> Lamont Harper, one day he was, he was asking me, he goes, how old are you? And I said, I'm 23. He goes, no, you're not. I said, yeah, I am. He goes, well, I don't believe you. I got to see your driver's license. So I showed it to him. He goes, I got two brothers that are older than you. <laughs> So I'm, only, I'm only five years older than the seniors. And some of the seniors, I was only four years older, you know. Yeah. So pl mm -hmm. was Plainview your first and last job? No, I, I was at Plainview four years, and then went to Little Coronado one year, and then left after that. Okay. What did you do afterwards? I've been in the insurance business ever since. And, and so I've got a big health agency, and we do a little bit of life and a lot of investments. And, so. and do, do you still play? Yeah, I, I play in church a lot, and, and, uh, and my old trumpet teacher, Mr. Tolley, is still alive. He's 90, and he lives at Raider Ranch, the retirement house home here, oh and he, he will play for them, and I go play with him to help, because at 90, it makes a difference. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's yeah, great. I, I play some, and then it, it was good. My son played trumpet growing up, and so all through his Allstate years and all that, I'd learn stuff with him and help him, you know, so that kept me kept me playing well, well and you I'm... played the trumpet yeah he's a phenomenal yeah. trumpet player mm -hmm. i don't know if i ever saw you play or hear you play oh he was great well how challenging was it to be that young and to try to command the respect of students who were not that much younger than you that's what we call them coach <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it was I don't know. I, I don't know if I did or not, but I think part of it was OT had such a strict deal that it wasn't an issue is where I think had I gone to, because I got offered jobs in Lubbock at the junior highs. And I don't know if I'd have gone there and been not as controlled because I was immature or that was the advantage. That's one of the reasons my dad wanted me to, to go to Plainview was um, OT. It, it was OT was such a good regimen that, that sure helps because I never had any discipline problems because it. Yeah. I think everybody's too afraid to, and so, not that they were afraid of OT per se, but he just didn't allow it, and it just, it just never was a problem. I have to tell you a funny story about OT and Michelle because Michelle was supposed to be on here, but she uh, has something come up, so she couldn't be on here. Uh, so one time she, we were goofing off in the band hall, and she threw a pencil and it hit OT in the head. Oh. I don't know if you remember. And he turned around and he was so mad. And then he realized it was Michelle. And then he just laughed. Yeah, he loved Michelle. He was Michelle. probably the least likely hey. person 
And she was so embarrassed. And, and then I, was, I remember that he turned around and he was ready to let loose on someone. And then he saw there was Michelle and he just laughed and went on. <laughs> was she throwing it at someone or was she just throwing it? Probably. Probably at me. <laughs> no, I think we were just goofing off and yeah. she threw it and didn't mean to hit him at all. But yeah. Yeah, Michelle would be a hard one to be mad at. I, I yeah. know. <laughs> uh, Sharon, Rodney. Did you guys date in high school? We started dating in bands, yeah. So his, I guess, the beginning of my junior year and the beginning of his sophomore year. Okay. And then now we've been married 36 and a half years. So, yeah. Wow. Is he back? Is he in the house? No, he's in Dallas at a meeting. Okay. So okay. if he was here, I would have made him come in here. But um, <laughs> no, he's gone. Well, cool. So both of our kids were in band. They both played trumpet and and stuff so do you guys show the pictures of mommy and daddy oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> well that's funny hey so coach i've got a remember donna freeze uh yes. donna I freeze think donna, she lives in yeah yeah no she lives in plainview donna i think she's in love with him but i don't know I, i've seen her at united a couple of times so yeah she uh she asked um was there a section of the marching band yeah. that was your favorite to mentor? So did you enjoy the brass, the woodwinds, the twirlers, flag? You know, our flag corps was really good. But being a trumpet player, it was hard not to favor the trumpets. It's just <laughs> it sort of goes that way. Because mm -hmm. so, I see all the trumpet sectionals. I would, I, I'd have my horn. I'd play with us, you know, and, and we would learn them and everything. But uh, you know, uh, I was right. gonna say. Speaking of John Wright, that one where when the flags, I think, were circling oh, with, yeah. and he would sneak in the middle, and all of a sudden it would open up, and he and he had his solo. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, uh, I hate to say, but that was my idea. But <laughs> I was gonna say, where did OT get the idea? That that one was mine, but the okay. most of them were OT, so. All right. Or they were joining. John Wright could play really high notes. That's he could. Right. He had a range. I could never play that high. Well, he was. He had that little bitty mouthpiece. A Shilky sort of was. Yeah, the Shilky 14A4A was mine. I never oh, okay. had it since. I'm, I'm wondering where it is. <laughs> John may have it in the back of his airplane. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any other stories about jazz band? And how long did you? Uh, the uh, the director for jazz band because I was there your junior, my junior, senior year. I guess yeah, three I, years. I mean, it was it was just part of the job. I mean, when I interviewed with OT, he said, you know, you, you'll have a beginner class, you go help junior highs, you'll do the jazz band and the second concert band and assistant for the marching band. So that was that was how I got it because it was how, how did you come up with the music? Do you recall that you uh. Get in I, I, from I've played or? almost all that music before from all okay. the years. So, mm -hmm. OT, yeah, I, 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 nice. he let me buy all that. Was, they had some, but it's not a lot. And yeah, so, I don't remember one music or song. Yeah. Do you guys, Cheryl, Sharon, do y'all remember? Satin Doll. Satin Doll. Yeah, I remember from the concert band when y'all did Jupiter um, mm. by Holst. That was a hard piece and, and pulled it off. The concert man. And, uh, I remember Carmina Barana. Yeah, was... and Dan Busters is a march. Okay, yeah. Once every five years, he loved Dan Busters. And so, yeah. 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 I'm mostly I mostly remember the Christmas now concert. That we, I laugh that we played that song, um, Let's Get Physical, because it's like right. now as an adult, you're like, oh, there's a lot of people <laughs> there. We yeah. were out there playing it in conservative <laughs> plain view. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm surprised you kept us uh, pretty. I mean, my senior year, I think uh, the uh, girls mentioned Lamont Harper, uh, oh, yeah. uh, Mark Mathis. I mean, there were some clowns. I mean, these guys always goofed off. Uh, Ted Culp. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I'm sorry. By me. Yeah. The whole section by me. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how you got anything done with the with that group of uh, kids. Oh, they same thing. They once it came down to work, they all worked, and so yeah, yeah Lamont was definitely a character. There's no doubt about that. 
bless him, rest mm-hmm. in peace. I, you know, he died about five years ago. Like, yeah. Yeah, he was too young. Uh, oh, I think who was trying to think who's it was Michelle and I, uh, Susan Hansard. Mm-hmm. I think Ladonna. Only... Ladonna was in band, right or not? La- Ladonna Owens. Oh, yeah, she played Owens. for Warren. Uh-huh. But she wasn't oh, my but class she wasn't though. Okay, I was just yeah, trying to but... think my this my senior year, who who else was seniors is Michelle, Susan, myself. I think that's it. The rest yeah. of them were underclassmen. So. Yeah, was was Dana Sparrow your age or your old? No, she was eighty two. Okay, she was John Wright's age in Cindy's. Yeah. So, but she uh, a few years ago too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Misty Dickey well, passed away. I mean, a lot of people yeah. from jazz band. Misty Dickey. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm friends with her on Facebook when she went through that. Awful. Yeah. That was I enjoy. Awful. I have to admit, I enjoy all y'all's Facebook. I see your I enjoy looking at the pictures of your families. I like that about Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it is you. funny. Like you can't imagine that like when we were in high school, you would be able to do that, you know, like yeah. see each other's lives 40 years later on a yeah. computer. Like, yeah, the worst thing about Facebook is somebody showed a picture when we were down at Buccaneer Days and we all had short shorts on. I'm at the front and Carol posts on there, ooh. <laughs> we had short shorts, coach. <laughs> oh my God. Were they the coaches' shorts? <laughs> no, they were just regular shorts. But everybody had, you know, those god awful short shorts. <laughs> hey, that was back in the eighties. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's a, uh, let's talk about Buccaneer days. I only got to go my my freshman year. Oh, After really? that, I, yeah, because I was I was a, I was a baseball and I couldn't go. Uh, my sophomore and uh, junior senior year. What about you, ladies? Okay, you, there's got to be some some uh, great. I'm not stories. sure. I'm not going to tell on anybody, but yeah, there were some crazy. You don't have to mention names. Crazy you don't have to mention names. <laughs> you know, OT and I went to a lot of effort to keep that under control, and, and every night he'd say, "I have no earthly idea what's going on in there. I hope we never find out." Um, <laughs> on one of the trips, and I don't remember which one. But, you know, you guys tried so hard to keep us, like, separated or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. We had a connecting room to a group of boys from oh, another really? band. Oh, really? What? Oh, my God. <laughs> and, of course, none of us were going to tell. But, yeah. Oh, How did that happen? Oh, my God. Hey, that's, is that where you met your husband? <laughs> no. <laughs> we ended up locking the door, I think, when they started smoking joints, and we were like, oh, maybe this isn't smart. OT's going to uh, kill us. Well, I was telling Coach when I was talking about joining us, uh, you know, uh, was it Jeannie? Yeah, and Fanchon said they used to tape our doors. Well, they said uh, they taped certain doors uh, after curfew, and uh, uh, Kevin Box and uh, I think it was Kevin Box that there was a group of guys that they opened the door and they saw the tape. And they were like, "Ah, oh, shit!" <laughs> but the, but the chaperones were cool. They didn't get him in trouble. But uh, that, that was the year Kevin was a senior. The year before I got there, so mm-hmm. we we never taped the doors. We just never slept. We just walked the the halls or wherever it was. I remember when we come back, I'd just be totally exhausted. It's like I can't even tell you what my name is. I'm so tired. Did you guys take turns? At yeah, least? but it was such a big group. I mean, you just it we not pretty much OT and I both would just and, and hey, well, some of the sponsors too. Uh, Mr. Smith was he was a big help. Pat Smith's dad. Oh yeah, okay. John, John was he was a big help too. He's a big man. <laughs> he, he was a good guy on the parade because sometimes that parade there's a pretty rough crowd and, and yeah. he would walk on the side and he would. He would push people back out of the way, and they didn't argue with him, that's for sure. I got grabbed in one of the parades, but I think it was, didn't we go to Fiesta San Antonio one year, or did we always That was our that? freshman year. Okay, <laughs> well, I somebody grabbed me, and I, I just switched places with, like, a poor tuba player or something, because I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to stand here. And then somebody got stabbed in that same parade, not, oh not our band, but... I remember being like, wow, yeah, that was crazy. But I also, do y'all remember like before uh, 
was it Pat who was talking about this, Michael, where there was that other band from Houston and they were playing and we were all just mesmerized by them. They were yes. like incredible. That was really cool. I, I guess that was at Buccaneer Day. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. There was at uh, that st state, was it, I think, or in, uh, in Lubbock. Yeah, that uh, we mentioned about the Houston kids. Uh, but, uh, okay, what about, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the dancing? Uh, well, we hosted uh, some, uh, uh, like, other an bands? opposite. Yeah, the bands to come. You guys remember those little dance parties we had? Yeah, we'd have them there at, at Estacada there in the in the in the um, cafeteria, the oh yeah, the cafeteria. Uh, cafetorium, whatever that is over there. Why do we have it? Oh, it was right there by the football stadium. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. Like it yeah, it was always more fun with Lubbock High, right? They were yeah. fun. And I, I remember doing Lubbock High and Coronado. I don't remember any others per se. Well, okay. yeah, yeah, I DJed one of those. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I ended up DJing, but it was a Coronado one. Yeah. They came and. uh I told everybody, it's like the third time I'd say this. They gave me the uh, B-52's album. I didn't I had no idea what it was. Yeah. And it was Rock Lobster. I'm like, what is this song? Because we're all into <laughs> rock on, and roll that back was then. a good song. I didn't know what the <laughs> hell it was. I'm like, why are these kids on their back? picking their legs up. I'm like, what? Uh, and I remember Patrick Smith, I mentioned this too, that he uh, he lip synced to a rap song. Yeah. Uh, one of those uh, uh, dances, so. I just remember everybody always wanted to dance with Carol's brother, Joe, because, and it was like Devo and stuff. And we would just basically just jump up and down. Yeah, I do remember I, that. I must have left because I don't remember those guys either back in the 80s. So. I mean, the group from Coronado, when they came, they had about 10 girls that dressed up in Devo. They had that they put the hats really? on. I was like, what are they oh, doing? Wow. I just remember they were really short, you know, because they probably couldn't stay very long. So it seemed yeah, like yeah, once they did, kind of like got about, about 30 minutes yeah. was about it. You know? <laughs> yeah. It was hard. Well, to work we, it. we did a tape once to DJ that. I remember Mark Mathis spent so much time putting Aww. that music together. And um, so we like spent so many evenings just put because we had the double cassette tape. Right. Doing a mix tape. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to do that. What what music did you guys play? You you recall? Devo. Um, you know he liked a lot of that kind of new, um, new wave punk. punk. Stuff. Yeah, new wave punk. Yeah. So, but of course, rock and roll. Like, you know, we had to throw that in. And Sharon Sharon's an expert in that, <laughs> right? You're yeah. Expert, Sharon, <laughs> rock and roll expert. Yeah, too many concerts, and that's why I can't hear now. So. <laughs> uh, Michelle went to him as well, didn't she? Yeah. I was like, okay. Well, that Coliseum. Well, yes. you know who all went to the concert because the, the very next school day, everybody's got the concert t shirt. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I wish I would have kept mine because those things are selling for 100 bucks, 300 bucks at least. So, didn't keep mine. Well, I, I have mine some away. of mine, but I didn't always have the money to buy a t shirt. Or five bucks then. <laughs> yeah, but well, the concert tickets were expensive. I mean, they were ten dollars. Oh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the gas to get over there. Yeah. Did you go yeah. to any concerts, Coach? Well, growing up, yeah, I, I saw Chicago the first and second time they came to Lubbock, and hate say it, I saw John Denver. I don't know, I hate say it, but it was a great <laughs> concert. <laughs> I'm gonna show my age on that one. Uh, no, John Denver's a great musician. Yeah, well, yeah, he was in the tech band under my dad. He played saxophone. Really? Oh, he yeah. Dutch cool. uh -huh. His freshman year, he played saxophone in the tech band. And then his semester, he decided, it's funny, uh, you know, Kent Hans, who was the chancellor of tech and the state senator, and uh, he was in the fraternity with him, and and Den John Denver was telling him, he said, I I'm going to go to California and try to play music. And, and Kent Hans said, oh, dude, don't do that. Everybody's a failure. It does that. You can't make it that way. Mm -hmm. really he did. <laughs> wow, he proved them wrong, didn't he? Yeah, wow, that's a good story. <laughs> no, that's a great story. I want to go back to to uh, when we played rival teams. Were there any uh, was there any time that you were getting ready to go out in March at halftime that you were afraid? Like, 
you're afraid somebody's going to throw something at you or just afraid of the hostility from the opposing team? I don't remember anything of that issue. I, I was always so nervous that we had a few people who were not as smart as others and we were thinking, <laughs> OT and I'd be thinking, please don't forget where you're supposed to go. <laughs> Y'all were sharp. We never had to worry about that, but there are some others who were like, oh my God. I know. Cheryl, did you ever have fear that somebody was going to do something bad or? Oh, no. Mm -mm. No, we just, it was just all in um, good fun, I think, and to entertain. I mean, I think the pressure, at least that I would feel is like to just do my best, you know, to play loud and, you know, remember everything because we did it all by memory. Yeah. Um, we didn't like carry music or anything. So, um, you know, just like, okay, I got to remember this. And, you know, it was, it, you know, it's a good kind of pressure to learn to deal with, you know. I think it's so, good for you to have to go through that when you think of all the memorization of all aspects of it. It's mm -hmm. good for your mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Jared? I wasn't ever really worried. I just wanted to, like Cheryl said, just to do my best and not mess up. And I remember it was my sophomore year when they had all those trumpet solos and Cindy and John and Joe. And um, so I, I was the very first one. Like I, I played Georgia and it was the very first song. And so I don't know if y'all remember that quench gum. So I would always chew quench gum because my mouth would be dry. And then I would swallow it right as we were walking out onto the field. And I remember he coming up one because OT would not let us chew gum. And I would try to kind of be discreet. Maybe, maybe I wasn't. I don't know. But OT came up and said, Dawa, you need to spit that gum out. And then I, so I told OT, I said, OT, it's to help me play my solo because my mouth is dry. And he's like, well, just don't let everybody see it then. <laughs> You Dallas has got away with shit. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, well, that's cool. What about you, Carol? We're afraid, but it, it did trigger a thought um, that I wanted to share with you guys. Like, if you think about, like, band had every type of kid in it. Like, we had football players. We had cheerleaders. You know, Diana Hayes was out there marching in her cheerleading outfit. And I think that's really cool. Like it really was the entire school. It wasn't just like the band nerds or even kids that were necessarily super good at music. It was just kind of the great equalizer, you know? We were all just doing our best together. You know, funny since you said that, uh, Ronnie Ortegon, y'all's class, 84, he and I would go to some of these small schools and watch him play football. And in the band, you would see cheerleaders. You would see football players. I mean, in their uniforms, marching. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were like, oh, wow. So, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. So let me ask you guys this. Did you mess up at any time marching? And if you did, Carol, what, what was your mistake? I know exactly when it was. It was Hereford my freshman year. Cause I was kind of an alternate, you know, I was just a freshman and it was all new and he was kind of moving me around a lot. He moved me that week and I had no idea what I was doing and I messed up and I literally was traumatized by that for a while. <laughs> Cause once you do that and you're on your own in the field and you're like completely lost, it's terrifying, you know, and I don't think it ever happened again. I think what after did you that, do? Put me, I just went the wrong direction or turned at the wrong time. I mean, I remember where I was on the field, but I don't remember what I did. It was just terrifying, you know? Yeah, because Mondays, Coach, you guys, did you all watch the film over the weekend or that Monday morning? Because OT would show it on Monday. Um, no, we'd watch it that night. We got back after everybody left. We'd stay and, and critique it and go over it and everything. So you make your notes for Monday so you can yeah. throw people onto the bus. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Sharon? Did you mess up any? Oh, I'm sure I did. I don't really remember anything right offhand, but I don't know. Uh-huh. We could probably ask Michelle, but it's okay. Yeah. What about you, Cheryl? <laughs> Do you recall I don't, re I don't recall anything specific. I mean, I'm sure that I did mess up, but nothing that was traumatizing. But I the fear was there, Carol. The fear was there. <laughs> well, coach, back to you. 
do you, was there like a, a few that you can remember that was really bad? No, we, we it was drilled enough where it typically was just a spacing issue or, or somebody might miss a step and then catch up real quick on a couple. But we, we never had anything terrible happen. Well, uh, I, I was perfect freshman <laughs> year through my senior year to my, our last game. I stopped five yards too short. And that's the only time I ever messed up. And luckily, OT didn't call me out the next on that Monday. But, Were you uh, drinking, Michael? No, I, no, no. I was a baseball player. I could not do that. No, no. But there's other people I know. No, I was a good kid. I can say I, I never skipped a, a day in my life. Never. Mm-hmm. never was I was, when I was in high school, it was all step two drills. It wasn't the core stuff yet. And so I remember many a contest where one kid would stop at the wrong yard line or turn at the wrong one. And then the whole band at contest would just totally fall apart and think, now that was disaster. So we, we really didn't have that because. Do you remember that one, uh, for some reason they were doing stuff at Wayland. Do y'all mm-hmm. remember this? Sharon and Cheryl, they did some sort of marching contest at Wayland. Yeah, it, it was I my remember, first year. I'd been there about six weeks and it was funny. We that, messed, up, we yeah, messed we, up kind of as a band there because I think the hash marks weren't marked very well yeah, or something. It, it wasn't marked well. It was a grass field and it was dark and OT was yeah. not there that day of that that performance it was that contest it was like a thursday night and i right at the end of school i come into the office and ot goes i don't feel very good and then all of a sudden he just lays on the floor he has a kidney stone oh and i'd like oh my god he's about to die so he rushed (laughs) him over to the hospital and and so he was in the hospital so it was just me with the band i was like oh my god (laughs) Well, he didn't see it. We're okay. The kids were so well behaved. It was just, and and it was a dark, dark field. It was hard to, and so the lines weren't great. We still won the the band contest, but it was us against a bunch of 2A, 3A schools. So it wasn't really Mm -hmm. a fair contest with them. And luckily we were inside a bowl. They couldn't, they couldn't see us. (laughs) (laughs) Well, guys, go ahead, Lisa. Go ahead. So, Coach, what was the best part of your time in Plainview? And what was the highlight of that time for you? When you retire, or you when you quit? Just kidding. no, no. Um, no my uh, actually with that second band in concert, my second and third years, we made sweepstakes. We played pretty hard stuff for a second band, and I was I was really proud of that. That because we we played hard stuff, and then they they did well in sight reading because that my first band at Plainview that that first year didn't wasn't very good and we made it two in concert and we went into sight reading and they couldn't sight read at all and we made it three and that was a gift from the, the judges because oh I remember um Shirley Holloway was my best drummer in and, and we had a in our sight reading piece it had to repeat from the very end all the way to the beginning all the way through again and it ended with a fermata or the drum roll well she didn't see the repeat so the whole entire second time through the piece <laughs> There's this drum roll just going on. And I look back there and she's about to fall over about halfway through. <laughs> 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 uh, Kevin Boxing mentioned that someone hid OT's baton. I think I don't think you were there, Coach, but I don't know if you guys heard that story. And, and no one confessed who hid his baton. Because like I said, no one would dare to pull a prank on OT. Yeah, OT oh, doesn't seem like the one to pull a prank on. If I'm... Yeah. But uh, and then, I do uh, remember them in the ceiling. Those yeah, batons on the ceiling. Yeah. yeah, yeah Kevin and them throw them on top. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Suzanne Rogers mentioned that there is one game like in Pampa or Amarillo. It was cold and snowy, and, and one of the girls forgot their cape. And OT says, "Well, ladies, no capes for everybody." So it was a very freezing experience for them. But uh, anyway, but guys, it's been gone for about an hour and a half now. Yeah. Yes. We enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Thank you for coming on. Uh, I'd like to have some parting words. Let's start with Carol. It's it's really cool to think back on those times that I hadn't really thought about. 
Lisa, you were really powerful in the last one at the end. Um, I still actually remember the first time I saw you because we were we were siloed, right? Because we were in one class all together, all through school, pretty much. And I remember walking into biology and I was like, who is that girl? Like, I thought you were a new kid, but you were in our biology class, I guess, your sophomore year. Yeah. But anyway, I just thought that was really powerful what you said, because, you know, there was a lot of high school that I would not want to go relive for sure. So it's nice to just remember the good stuff and to see friends, Sharon and Cheryl and Michael. And um, it's just been neat. So thank you guys for doing that. Thank, Thank you, you, Carol. It's real important. And the part of the show is wanting to overshadow, you know, some of the darkness or bad memories or whatever, and to bring to light the, the positive memories, because I think that lends itself to healing. And that's a real um, impetus for doing this show. So thank you for sharing that. Cheryl? Sharon? Oh, Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl, Cheryl, you go ahead. Okay. Um, well, thank you guys for inviting me. I never expected this. I mean, I, I'm sad that Michelle wasn't here and Cindy. Um, but, um, you know, everybody has their strengths, their gifts. Um, and I think that band just really brought that out in people. I mean, some people were crazy funny, but, you know, they weren't, I mean, it was, it was okay, you know, and we all got along and we all did the job at the end of the day. Um, I, I feel like I was actually pretty shy and being around people like that, you know, you know, it was, it was liberating in a way. It was, um, you know, people that I probably wouldn't have hung out with in any other um, part of my life. So, you know, it just opened a lot of opportunities um, for me. And like I said, I really want to thank coach and um, OT and the teachers. I mean, it, it was an unbelievable experience um, when the, I don't think, you know, I, I have my own children. I don't think I ever saw teachers as dedicated. So I really feel blessed and, you know, thank you for being that, that blessing to us. Wonderful. Well thanks. said, well said. Sharon, what about you? Yeah, I just kind of ditto what they said. And so, um, Carol and I were really good friends and um, it's good to see you and, and me and Cheryl were great friends. And I was so glad when she moved back to Plainview. Um, you moved back our freshman year, right? Mm -hmm. or, or, or yeah. Really glad. So, um, but yeah, just a chance to just meet so many people and just, um, just have a great time. And, and I agree. I think Plainview just, it was just a great school and the band was great. And coach and OT just made, really made a difference in my life and, and more than they know, and um, um, I, I think it's neat that y'all are doing this, Lisa and Michael, and, and it's been fun watching. I haven't been able to watch all the podcasts, but I plan to. And um, I'm sad Michelle couldn't join us too, but um, it was fun being in school with Michelle and, and getting to share experience with her and then watching Deanne. And then I'm sad Cindy wasn't on here because Cindy was definitely a role model. Always wanted to be like Cindy. She was just amazing. And so mm -hmm. um, she meant a lot to me, but. Anyway, it's been fun. Wonderful. Coach? Oh, it's just great to see everybody. Y'all look to see y'all have grown up and be such wonderful people. It's just it's just it's just fun. And it makes me <laughs> oh. I apologize for my dumb dog. <laughs> it's just fun to, to just to see what y'all have developed into. It just it just makes you make you, makes you proud and happy and thrilled. And so it's been fun. I've enjoyed this. I'm going to have to get me a new computer. I got my old computer and I've noticed my picture is really fuzzy, which is probably a good thing, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Yeah. Christy You're told good. me I need to dim the lights. And I was going to like blind everybody on my forehead. But <laughs> Hey, why don't you tell her to, to pop in and say hello real quick. Yeah. She came walking through and had her pajamas on. So I don't think, I don't okay. think she can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this you know, is she a was. She was pregnant, wasn't she? Your yes, first yeah. year, our, our last, yeah. our last year there, yeah. our third year there, she was pregnant, and we had Nicole, our oldest, right at the start of the last year. Okay. So, well, yeah, Nicole's now about to turn forty, and she has three kids. And oh wow! Thirty-six, and he's got two kids. And... Wow, 
That's awesome. Yeah. Girls, you're getting ready to have your 40th reunion, right? Yes. Yes. Fun. Well, we had a wonderful time at ours, and I'm sure you're going to have an amazing time. I can't yes. thank you all enough for yes. taking time out of your lives and your schedules and your busyness to participate and to share your stories with us. Uh, it's, it means so much, and it's going to mean so much, to, especially to your fellow band members and your classmates to hear your perspectives and your stories. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And coach, it's so good to see you. <laughs> well, you guys are the first class of 84. Is that correct, Lisa? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Well, hey, guys, you guys are welcome. Grab some other friends. And, you know, it doesn't have to be 84. It could be 85, younger, older. So, you know, we, we Lisa and I enjoying it. So you got to grab some other fellow classmates and let's share some more stories. Okay. Well, guys, thank you again. Thank you. Thank sure you. Enjoyed it. Thanks, y'all. Thanks. Bye. 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 That was good. Another good one. I know. I love hearing all those stories. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there was a few that caught me off guard. The the John Denver one. That was, I I kind of vaguely remember he went to Tech, but now hearing a, a story about him going to Tech, that was pretty cool. So it was good to see all of them. It really was. Yeah, I'd, uh, you know, we'll definitely have Michelle and uh, Cindy back on. I did reach out to Cindy and text her like, I want bus three because I was, that was like the Hano bus. I said, I got to have you, James Gonzalez, Oscar Garcia, Letitia Gonzalez, whoever who I know. Oof, we may have to have tequila shots for that show. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Let's try to you guys, if you're listening, please come on. Yes, Let's absolutely. Everybody from that bus on here. Oh. And so while, before we sign off, I just want to remind everyone who watches our program, if you have an idea for a theme, please reach out to us. Give, send us a message, post it on the Goat Knuckle Talk with Flow page. Um, we're definitely open to ideas. Or bring your friends on. Uh, we want to really continue to expand on this platform and to continue to bring you know the stories up to the forefront and we are open to all sorts of ideas so please shout yes out. absolutely we have uh, we have a handful that that uh, are postponed so hopefully soon uh, we'll we'll be able to have them on and i'm excited uh, next month to have the two daughters from uh, dr sigler so that yeah, will be a fascinating amazing. yes absolutely well miss lisa until the next time Love Peace and brother. love. Peace and love. Okay. Good night, everyone.